Hello YouTube and today we are going to derive Schrodinger wave equation. This equation was formulated in the year 1925 and was published in the year 1926 by Austrian physicist Erwin Schrodinger. This equation consists of a set of partial differential equation and help us to describe any quantum particles like atoms, molecules and you know all those things. In classical mechanics, we have the Newton laws to predict how a particular body will behave. But in the quantum world, and don't get too high thought about quantum. Quantum is nothing but the micro world, the world of atoms, molecules, as we say in chemistry. Now, these equations help us to understand how the particular molecule will behave and thereby help us to predict what the energy of these molecules will be, what will be their velocities and other interacting properties. But obviously you need a particular set of operators to be operated on these equations. But yeah, they are the basic set of equations. So you can use any opera, particular operator on this equation to get a particular result. Now, moving on, and uh, this is not the thing we are discuss discussing on Scottish education, we are discussing how to derive the equation. So let's move on. Look at this basic equation that you are seeing right now. I have marked it as equation 1. The equation is telling you that psi is given as a sine 2 pi x over lambda. Now, do you recognize this equation? Because all of us has in somewhere have read this equation. This equation is actually taken from the classical mechanics of the wave, where psi is the particular wave function that we are discussing, a is the amplitude, sine is obviously the sine function, pi is pi, x is the distance of the electrons from the nucleus, and lambda is the wavelength of the particular electron. Now, you will see how wavelength can have electron but if you have studied the de Broglie principle you know that electrons or any such, such uh, subatomic particles can behave in a dual nature okay now let's move on if I differentiate this equation as we have done here you can see that it is d shy by dx and that one will give you a cos 2 pi x lambda again multiply by 2 pi by lambda now let's make a second differential d2 psi by dx square and you will get minus 4x square by lambda square into psi Th that give us to this final form of equation d2 psi by dx square plus 4 pi square lambda square psi is equal to 0 this is for one dimensional now if I take it to the three dimension and let's see what it looks like this is the equation for three dimension just add d2 psi by dy square and d2 psi by dz square and you got the equation of a three dimension. This is one of the most simple form of Schrodinger equation that you can find online or in your books. If you go to Wikipedia, they will also show you this equation. This is a very basic equation. But this equation is not really helpful in determining many features that we are going to study later in quantum chemistry. So let's go and move ahead with our derivation from de Broglie's equation we all know that lambda is h by mv where m is the mass of the object v is its velocity if i square it you get h square by mv square which is nothing but h square by the momentum square now using this particular part we can move to the next part of our equation note all these values before moving up you can pause the video right now, remember till this point and then Okay, now you can resume here. Okay, now if you have remembered the earlier part correctly, then you should know that if we put the value of lambda square as h square by p square, then you will get this particular equation. Oh, sorry, I have made a little mistake here and um, I will rectify it just right now and this 
should will be 4 so sorry sorry for my mistake uh, this is actually 4 in this particular case and I should write it 2 multiply by this 4 okay because this initially it was not there so I should show you how we get this 8 in the next part but sorry for that that 8 is nothing but 2 into 4 now why I multiplied this 2 is because to get a half here now we will just have a look why we want that half mv square half mv square can you remember what this is this is a kinetic energy we need that kinetic energy in our equation so that we could get a very suitable small equation that we will use later now on putting all these values together and putting half mv square in the in this part as um, the kinetic energy we get this form that is uh, quite a pretty but still not to the point now take the total energy condition we know that total energy is nothing but potential energy plus kinetic energy so we can write that kinetic energy is e minus v now to all of you who are probably thinking what this symbol is noting this is nothing but this is del the reverse of del it is also one form of particular equation that we use and we will use in quantum chemistry to denote the wave nature anyhow so now we can replace kinetic energy by writing as the total energy minus potential energy e minus v so just put this value to here and we get this equation that shows del square psi or plus 8 pi square m by h square e minus v psi is equal to 0 this is also a form of Schrodinger wave equation but I am going to take this a little further to get another form that will help us to understand one of the property that Schrodinger equation describes so let's move on if you observe that I can multiply I'm oh sorry I can shift the sign and I can make it delta uh, square psi is equal to minus 8 pi square m e minus v h square into psi now on further moving you can check this out that I have just nothing but I have multiplied that thing I have opened the bracket and I have taken all the del part and the psi part in one end and I have taken uh, the e psi that's total energy into the wave function to one end and this particular thing can be written as the Hamiltonian operator into psi is equal to e psi this Hamiltonian operator is the energy operator that we will do check later and actually this is not quite necessary until and unless you are in a very higher education dealing up with quantum chemistry but if you do you will need this to get the energy that a particular molecule may possess now what are the significance of Schrodinger wave equation Schrodinger wave equation doesn't contain time if you see that in this entire equation we have no representation of time and what this help us this help us uh, to not only represent the stationary wave characters but it also help us to pinpoint any wave at a particular given instant of time also and also not now we have another equation that is known as the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation that will help us to do that this is not a part of this video so I'm just neglecting that one same time Schrodinger wave function is an eigenvalue function and what is eigenvalue function we will deal that in our next course of video but that is one of the important feature that Schrodinger wave equation describes and the most important we can just change the operator and we can get various results I can use Hamiltonian operator to get energy I can use particular velocity operators to get a particular velocity of the molecules and so on so that's it that's the video for today and I hope that pretty soon I can make some new videos and can upload it so just hit like if you like it and do subscribe below and comment if you find any wrong statement I have made I might have made to human is to err so I might have commit certain mistakes so if you find some please do comment it will help me to rectify those in the next videos